We're in Miami searching for what makes people coffee snobs. Coffee is one of the most popular beverages globally. In Miami alone, estimated a million cups of coffee are consumed a day. I drink coffee daily. I enjoy the flavor, but it's really just for a pick-me-up. But I'm excited to learn the art behind it. For many, the day doesn't truly begin until their first sip of coffee. I'm looking for high quality, over-the-top hospitality, and an all-over good vibe. We're checking out one of the cheapest and strongest coffee you'll find in Miami, a coffee place inside of a plain and a coffee shop that outshines in quality. Starting off at Versailles on Calle Ocho, the world's most famous Cuban restaurant that's been here since 1971. Felipe Valls opened Versailles as a hub for Cuban exiles. At the heart of Versailles is La Ventanita, the iconic walk-up coffee window famous for its cafecito, a staple in Cuban culture. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever had Cuban coffee, but let me tell you, it's strong enough to wake the dead. Today, I'm trying some Cuban classics that they're known for. And apologies ahead of time for me mispronouncing most of these words. The Café Cubano. This is a strong shot of Cuban coffee with sugar, creating that delightful espumita on top. It's small, but it's mighty. Normally espresso straight is too strong for me, but the strong coffee with the, the perfect amount of sugar somehow makes it extremely smooth without needing any milk. That's crazy. The colada, essentially a large cafecito meant for sharing. The cortadito, equal parts espresso and steamed milk. It definitely has way more sugar but this is lighter with the cream. I don't know which one I like better, I like both. They would be good together. Yeah. And the cafe con leche, a larger cortadito with more milk. Okay, I spoke too soon because if this and this had a baby, it would be this. The cafe con leche is the mix of both. It's got the sweet, it's got the cream, it's actually perfect. I'm probably gonna come here every day. I could drink 10 of these, but let's be real, I'd probably have a heart attack. And guess how much this cortadito was? One dollar. In Miami, even the homeless ask for more money than that. Well, I used to work here when I was 17. I went to Miami Senior High, and this was my first job. Love the coffee, love the company. The hospitality here is amazing. I watched these hardworking women not only serve guests, but also interact with regulars, asking questions and creating a real community vibe. Think Cuban diner, simple and to the point, Regulars and tourists alike gather here, creating a lively and welcoming environment that captures the essence of Cuban community life. And if you're just in the mood for a little bite without going into the restaurant, they also have Cuban snacks at the window. Whether you're just grabbing a quick cafecito or sitting down to share with friends, Versailles brings people together. And now I have enough energy to try all the other places. So let's go. Sky Coffee Buenos Aires in Brickles. <sighs> All right, we made it to Sky Coffee Buenos Aires, an Argentinian concept coffee place in an airplane. Let's try it. Ever dreamt of being a steward or stewardess only to find out that you're too short? That's what happened to Rosanna Bentos, the creative mind behind Sky Coffee. She turned her passion for aviation into reality by transforming a retired MD-88 fuselage that was put out of commission by Delta in 2019 into a one-of-a-kind coffee shop. She sold her house to buy this aircraft. Now that's believing in yourself. This oh-so-very Instagrammable spot was a must-stop on our search because it's so dang creative. This is such a unique experience from the fact that you're ordering inside of a plane down to the little decors and details that make it look like an outdoor airport. Oh my god, it's literally like a plane! It is a plane. You walk on the plane, get your photo ops in, and then you order. And go pick a seat while you wait for your order to be brought to you. What a creative way to reuse something that was going to be trash, even down to the little details of the coffee on the seats. Well done. The outfits that they wear keep the theme on brand and really immerse you into the feeling you're on a plane. It completely sets the mood. Let's get into the coffee. They pride themselves on organic fair trade coffee and their cute themed lattes. So I got a few to try. You come sit down and you bask in the heat. You guys, I do recommend this place, but don't come when it's 90 freaking degrees. And because it's plane themed, they even have little helicopters for each table. Just kidding, this is to keep the flies away. All right, let's give them a try. Mmm, it's sweet, has a little bit of the red velvet flavor. I love the color. You know the coffee's gonna be good when they can do a little latte art. Oh, mother All right, no more helicopter. You can smell the little flowers they put on top. I don't know if it's hibiscus or not. It's not a flavor that I think pairs or is anything I wanna eat with my coffee, but it is pretty. Next, the dulce de leche with the little airplane on top. If you like sweeter coffees, these ones are definitely good for you. I ordered these because they're more pretty and Instagrammable, but I kind of like mine a little less sweet. I'm no barista, but I do know drinks. So as far as looks go, beautiful taste. 
smooth. Some drinks come with little garnishes to snack on, but they also have plenty of food items if you're hungry. Despite the coffee shop not paying anything for marketing, this concept has gotten a huge amount of media attention. And the geniuses who realize that it's way too hot for coffee outside in Miami built these domes, which is new, you only need to spend $20, but the thing is, you kind of have to reserve them because they only have two. Better finish my coffee before my flight takes off. <laughs> Nobody. Such a creative concept with creative drinks. Now to the next spot. <laughs> Onto brewing Buddha in Pinecrest. <sighs> okay, that was far. But you guys said it was a must try, so let's dry off and give it a shot. Brewing Buddha was founded by brothers Jordan and Cassidy in 2017. They meticulously source their coffee beans and roast them in house. They continually push the boundaries of what coffee can be. I think what makes it special is that uh, we're super creative. Um, we try to be first with trends, roast in house. We're not afraid to push the limits. I think it's super important we create our own brand. It's made by us for us, it's our own flavor profile. It's something that's unique to us. You can't buy it anywhere else unless you get get a Brewing Buddha bagged coffee from us, it won't be our coffee. It's incredible how many different methods there are to make coffee and the numerous factors that influence each step. Brewing Buddha crafts their own cold brew, a process that takes 24 to 36 hours. They have this thing called nitro coffee, which is cold brew with you guessed it, nitrogen. So the nitrogen kind of makes it have a foam and a creamier, lighter flavor. Mm. Which usually plain black coffee for me is not horrible, but strong. But this is like light and airy, smoother without needing any of the sugar, any of the cream. I quite enjoy this. I actually think it's stronger too, so. This is their creme brulee latte that they burn the sugar on the top like an actual creme brulee. And they have their own syrups, which is cool because you can take them home and I will put this in a cocktail or so I don't have to run all the way here. I can make my own kind of coffee like this at home. Let's give it a try. The burnt sugar on top, oof, it's very good. The hospitality was excellent. They made me feel right at home and the staff was very knowledgeable. Their team also creates hilarious social media posts featuring John as Mr. 305. <laughs> made me feel like I knew them before even meeting them. Okay, so I need to like fake laugh, like just like you're having fun. <laughs> a little bit in slow-mo, it's fine. <laughs> the ambiance was a relaxed coffee shop vibe and super cool artwork from the owner displayed throughout. Boring Buddha was delicious and knowledgeable. I feel like I learned so much about coffee that I might be a coffee snob. Now I get it, okay? Because once you have a cup of coffee with love and care and so much thought process behind it, but then having just a regular cup of coffee, I don't think I can go back. <laughs> So yeah, I'm a coffee snob.